This is 1050 AM KCAA Loma Linda and 106.5 FM Yucaipa. Your NBC Sports Radio update starts now. A big upset in college football. I'm Jason Page. Oklahoma came in ranked 10th in the country at the Cotton Bowl today. The Red River shootout taking on rival Texas and things not going according to plan for the Sooners. Texas looking for a two touchdown lead. Swoops out of the gun. Strong formation to the left. Snap back. Stoops looking. Go. He's going to throw it. He's got an open man for a touchdown. It's Blewett in the back of the end zone. All alone for the score. All courtesy of Chuck Cooperstein on Westwood one. And it would be Texas and Charlie Strong getting the upset. 24 to 17 was the final score. Other finals from around the top 25 today. It has gone final with number six, Clemson, knocking off Georgia Tech, 43-24. Number seven, LSU, no trouble with South Carolina, 45-24. Number 18, Michigan continues to roll. They win again, beating number 13, Northwestern, in impressive fashion, 38-0 at the big house. Number 15, Notre Dame, they knocked off Navy, 38-24, game you saw over on NBC. Earlier today, it was number one Ohio State beating Maryland 49-28. The Buckeyes remain undefeated, 21 of 28 passing for Cardale Jones. He had two touchdowns in the game. Number 22, Iowa defeats Illinois 29-20. It was 24th ranked Toledo beating Kent State 38-7. One other, a couple other finals from the top 25. Number three, Baylor 66, Kansas 7. And Ole Miss beats New Mexico State 52 to three major league baseball going on as we speak it's the cardinals and the cubs in st louis with chicago on top six one cardinals took game one of that series on friday on saturday night or on friday night i should say 907 p.m eastern set for first pitch with the dodgers and the mets in los angeles the mets leading that series one game to none this is nbc sports radio This is KCAA. Slam the door on fee pay. Forget everything you know about selling online because I'm here to tell you about a new and revolutionary way to buy and sell on the internet. BuySellMakeOffer.com is here to shake up the web. Tired of paying those outrageous fees? You'll never pay a fee with BuySellMakeOffer.com. For a monthly membership package starting at only $7.95, you can list and sell up to 50 items. That would cost you nearly 100 bucks with the other guys. Go right now to BuySellMakeOffer.com and sign up today. We found the problem with your car. Um, Turns out the uh, carburetor differential modulator is out. What? And while we were digging around in there, this thing fell off. Stop. There's no automotive repair nightmares at Diego Martinez's Five Star Automotive in San Bernardino. Five Star Automotive, where you'll get a great experience and home of the $15.99 oil change. That's right, just $15.99. They specialize in transmissions, brake repair, AC, and many other repairs, all with a lifetime warranty on parts and labor. Diego knows when your auto needs five-star attention, it's never convenient. He offers a 12-month interest fee auto repair loan on major auto repairs with no money down. He even throw in free towing and a 10% discount for his neighbors in the 909 who work for the city and county of San Bernardino. Call 909-387-0770. That's 387-0770. Your neighbors at 909 West 2nd Street in San Bernardino. From the KCAA Weather Center, I'm Rod Tanner. For this afternoon, we have a heat advisory in effect into the evening. We'll have sunny skies at a high of 100. Overnight, it'll be clear with a low of 71. Sunday should be sunny and hot with a high of 95. Sunday night, we'll have clear skies at a low of 69. For Columbus Day on Monday, it'll be mostly sunny with a high of 95. Monday night, we'll have party cloudy conditions with a low of 69. It'll continue to be hot on Tuesday under mostly sunny skies with a high of 94. Wednesday looks mostly sunny with a high of 91. Again, there's a heat advisory in effect, and that's your weather forecast for this hour from the station that leaves no listener behind. NBC News Radio, AM 1050, KCAA. Like to spend a few days in another world? Then write this down. Golden Bear Cottages, Big Bear Lake. 
Now, listen, this is not some corporate-owned operation. It's family-owned and operated by some real nice people. Unique? Oh, you bet. Golden Bear Cottages features 28 one-of-a-kind cabins on a five-acre historic site. Great for families, couples, and groups. And cabins are available with one to seven bedrooms. Golden Bear Cottages is just a stone's throw from Big Bear Lake and super close to three great ski areas. Now, I could go on all day about Golden Bear Cottages in Big Bear, but to see everything, just go to goldenbear.net. Again, goldenbear.net. Golden Bear Cottages in Big Bear. Clean, comfortable, and affordable. Check them out. Goldenbear.net. Announcing a new way to think about how money really works. Safe Money Talk with Rich Lewag every Tuesday at 6 to 7 here on KCAA, 1050 AM. You just entered the gotcha zone. I line up to the start line and get ready to race with your host, Joe Britt. It's time for Gotcha Racing, live on KCAA 1050. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines and get ready for an action-packed, fun-filled hour of everything a motorhead ever loved or lived. Gotcha Racing with Joe Britt. Welcome to Gotcha Racing. This is Joe Britt. Hey there, race fans. You got uh, Joe Britt live and doing quite well in Southern California. It is completely burning up outside. Ooh, doggy, it is really hot outside in the hundreds, I believe. And man, what a! It's not a, even. A, it's not a great day to even work work on your tan because I tell you, if you did, you'd probably come back looking like a lobster. It is really cooking outside. But you know, hey, you're in Southern California, and that's how we roll without water, of course. <laughs> we desperately need rain, so someone needs to get some drums and. Uh, and do a couple of dances for us and see if we can get uh, some rain into Southern California or to Southern California and or just California in general because we actually need that rain. Okay, let me start off by saying I come to you a humble man, a humble man that is a reflection of God's grace and greatness, a humble man that is standing on shoulders of ancestors. Hello, America. Look alive, California. Wake up, San Bernardino. Stand up and be counted. Inland Empire. This is your host, Joe Britt, coming to you loud and strong and clear from the desert to the sea, broadcasting on the powerful KCAA <laughs> Empire. <laughs> I tell you what, we're also 1050 AM, and we're also, guess what? We're on 106.5. Let me say that in my sexy voice. 106.5 FM. We come to you loud and strong. <laughs> We're so glad we have um, that added to our family. We just can't. I tell you what. We are now the big dogs walking with the big stick in the Inland Empire. And soon, mark my word, mark my word, soon we'll be on 106.3. Oh, doggy. So, wait, 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 Joe, what are you saying? I'm saying this. We have captured the audience with 1050 AM hmm? for 13 years. Yes, we have. And now, that's AM. And now on the FM side, we have 106.5 FM. That's loud and clear and strong right now. Soon to be added to that is another FM station that we have. 106.3. Baby, we'll be all over the place. There's no place you can run and no place you can hide in Southern California that we won't be in your ear. Okay, we have a fantastic lineup here at the station. Oh my goodness, the host, all these talk guys are talking, talking, talking from sports to business to information that you desperately need. need like my show, Got You Racing Live, <laughs> coming to you loud and strong. Okay, let me uh, let me go back. A little house cleaning is always involved here. Okay, if you're listening somewhere. And by chance, by chance, you're not listening to 106.5. And by chance, you can't, you can't hear us on 1050. Guess what? Get your smartphone. Put that rascal to work. Well, what do I do with that, Joe? You dial 832-999-1050. What was that again? 
832-999-1050 and you can listen to the program. You can't comment, but you can listen to the program loud and clear. Now, if you want to call me and just rant or call me and say, hey, Joe, guess what? I've seen this cool, cool car and uh, you need to interview this guy or something, you know. Call into the studio. That number is 888-909-1050. 888-909-1050. And for those of you that are on the local tip, meaning right around the corner from the studio, <laughs> local, okay, 909-888-5222 or 5224, okay? 909-888-5222. Now, you can go to the internet Put in kcaaradio.com and listen to a podcast that we've had previously. All right. Now, the company, I tell you, we're, we're, we're growing to serve you better, Southern California. Okay. KCAA is growing to serve you better. You can go there to a podcast or you can go to a, a, a new company that's added. You want to hear some previous podcasts? Go to Brit Archive. Dot com b r i t t archive dot com pick and choose what you want pick and choose what you want now I can be found on Facebook under God Teresa or under Joe Britt uh, da, 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 da. you want to email me j Britt dot k c a a at gmail dot com or g r t v dot media at g- gmail.com grtv what's that that's got your racing tv that's our sister company we developed about in, since 04 okay we have uh we're gonna call it today it's gonna be called flashback saturdays okay um and we're happy to talk and give you interviews that we've had before some of you guys might have, might not have heard some of them all right so we're gonna we're gonna put some of those on and entertain your inner ear. But for right now, let me do this. You know we've got some sponsors, man. Oh, thank God for sponsors. <laughs> okay. One is called U and I, U and I Auto Parts in San Bernardino. If you want that special part, now this is a it's a yard. Okay. You're looking for a special part, hard to find, an older vehicle. Or even some newer vehicles that's not stripped and not beat out to heck. That's where you go get your parts from. Guys over there is Big John. Go see Big John. Tell him Big Joe sent you over there from KCAA. Got you racing live. And uh, let him do. Let, let him do the man. Let, let the man do what he does. And you won't be disappointed. Okay. That's you and I Auto Parts in San Bernardino. Also have another sponsor, Borla. Okay, B O R L A, exhaust. You know they they stepped up and supplied a brand new, complete muffler system for the little 5.0 Mustang that I have that I'm doing the bill on. My goodness, I can't wait to fire that rascal up. So that's Borla. So go to their uh, their site, and see what they have. You won't be disappointed in them at all and the other sponsor that we have is SCE gaskets now today I have an interview with mr. Ryan mr. Ryan is the CEO of uh, SCE gaskets fun fill afternoon fun fill entertainment I'm gonna get into your eardrum and I'm gonna talk crap <laughs> and I'm just gonna do what I do okay all right now basic news Boom, 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 boom. I gotta get some more music. I get some music uh, for for this entry. News. <clears throat> Did you know? Do you remember that uh, American Graffiti, that movie that came out? Uh, it could have been in the early '80s, I believe. There was a 1958. Oh, <laughs> all right, Joe. It is, that's my partner in crime, Joe Pagano, showing off. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much. I think you know we might just use that from now on for the um, for for the news part of this. All right. So a 1958 Impala from American Graffiti could sell for one million dollars. You believe that? So those of you guys that got old cars in your backyard and your wife is nagging you, I don't want that. It's this ugly. Blah blah blah. You're gonna have to tell her, look, baby, <clears throat> this car is worth some dough. 
okay? Cover it up, convince her that it's money in the bank, and don't get rid of it. Believe me, this is from experience. I had a 510, a two-door 510 71 model, okay? And it had the peanut motor in it whatnot. And um, I bought it from a, a buddy of mine, got it really cheap. I was going to make it look like the Brock number 46 Datsun. And my wife nagged the heck out of me to the point where I said enough is enough and I had to get rid of it. And you know what? I can kick myself in my rear butt right now with my size 10 and a half for doing that. No more. No more. No more. So, honey, if you're listening, guess what? No more. I won't do that anymore. Okay. So, <clears throat> also... A 1987 Buick Grand National with 16 miles on it. Beautiful condition. It, it, they're looking at, uh, at, at Mitchum, uh, the auctioneer. They think they're going to get uh, as much as an uh, 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 older Ferrari. $163,000 they're going to push for that. You know what's kind of funny? Every day I pass... Uh, that particular, not that car, but a black 87 Grand National in Rialto. The windows are rolled down, rain is getting in it, and they just, it just, the depreciation for the automobile is just not there. And it just sickens me. It really sickens me because if these guys can get $163,000 for that, no, I know this is 16 miles on it, but guess what? I'm thinking, man, if you could grab that for, you know, Five grand or so, put some ten to eleven care in it, get it back, restore it back to where it could be. You could be pushing up to about thirty five for that. You know, uh, this guy's from Canada coming down. They're buying those cars. It's a collector's item, but a lot of people don't see that. Janice Joplin, you remember her? She used to sing back in the early sixties. Her her Porsche, which is a three fifty six. Okay, 1964, 356, 1600 cc, 356. It will be on the auction block in New York City coming December 10th. So I wonder what that rascal will fetch. I wonder if it would, it would get beyond $60,000. I'm just wondering because, you know, it still has her weird colors on it, that uh, psychedelic, you know, she was all into. Well, you know what she was into. You know how she died. Some of you, some of you guys, kids don't, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She lived a life of uh, a fast life, and she died a fast. Living that life, she was uh, singing. But anyway, 1964, 1600 cc, 356 Porsche would be available for those of you who got the cash on December 10th, an auction in New York to go pick it up and have yourself some fun with it. I tell you, but one thing I would probably do is uh, I change. I would change that paint job. And there's no way I'm gonna drive that around looking all psychedelic. All right, let's go uh, pay some bills here, uh, Mr. Pagano. Let's pay some bills here. We're right back, folks. <laughs> Oh, no. Don't worry about a thing, pretty lady. You're in good hands with J&K Auto Body Paint and Repair. J&K Auto Body has been serving the Rialto area for years and are considered to be one of the oldest and the best auto body shops in town. The right people with the right tools and the right experience that can give you the service and the quality that you expect. 24 hours, 7 day a week, towing is available. That's J&K Auto Body. 241 South Palm Avenue, Rialto, California, across the street from the Metrolink station. Call us at 909-875-0400, 909-875-0400, that's 909-875-0400. You and I, Auto Truck Parts and Wrecking is loaded with 15 acres of used, salvaged, and rebuilt parts for your car or truck. Sure, you could go to any wrecking yard, but you and I, has what it takes. Expertise, high quality products, and the finest customer service you'll receive anywhere. You and I makes custom drive shafts, furnishes full warranties on all their parts, and keeps up on industry changes. Call 909-888-6841. You'll be impressed by the fast and friendly response from 
the UNDI skilled staff. You can also go to the Contact Us page and request a part. UNI hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 8 till 5, and Saturday, 8 till 3. UNI Auto Truck Parts and Wrecking is located at 1435 West Rialto Avenue in San Bernardino. Check out the UNI webpage at the letter U, the letter I, autoparts.com or call 909-888-6841. 909-888-6841. You're listening to Gotcha Racing Live on KCAA 1050 AM with Joe Britt. Now get to the chopper. Hasta la vista, baby. That great voice belongs to Larry the Entertainer. <clears throat> That rascal has a lot of skills under his belt, and it looks like we'll be using Larry, the entertainer, to doing some uh, hosting on an event that I'm putting together with uh, a local club in, in Rialto, and that should be pretty good. Larry's going to do his thing and, and, and show people how talented he is. <laughs> I love the guy to death. Okay, uh, you know what? At this station... We leave no one behind. And me, I leave no one behind. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I was at the Celine headquarters, and they had their open house, and their, it, it was a car show. Well, a week ago or so, we didn't have time to put all the uh, interviews on. So I have a short interview. Now, let me, let me tell you what's going on here. <clears throat> this particular young man put his money on the line, had to wait you know, several months to get his car, and he had just gotten control of it many many fact sitting in his car at the Celine headquarters that morning which is Saturday morning just picked it up and um, they let him go for a short spin for a mile and come back and there he was you know sitting in, in his brand new Celine with the uh, the twin screw uh, supercharger motor on it white black interior totally cool totally cool so uh, without further ado Joe and I uh, not Joe and I Joe Pagano, go ahead and load that rascal in. Let's see what this guy has to say. Don't do Don't do do Douche. <laughs> you wouldn't imagine. You would not imagine who would come across. You know, this is, um, so, you know, I'm perusing. It just got in, so was inside with Steve in his autograph session. Uh, that's Steve Celine, by the way, and we, you know, as I said, we're at the Celine headquarters in Corona, and we, you know, we this it's it's a car full of ponies, and so I'm walking and I'm walking, and I come across this fantastic 15 or 16 2015 2015 white pony, and the motor's massive. Has that uh, what is that the twin screw, supercharger. twin screw supercharger? And guess what? This gentleman, his name is Steve, also. Just got it today after a five month wait. Buddy, you, you, you got to be thrilled, huh? I'm very excited. <laughs> now, how many ponies have you had? This is my fourth. What, now, is this your fourth Celine or just your, uh, your fourth pony? Fourth in general. First, first Celine, but four total as far as being a Mustang owner. So, what convinced you or possessed you to go and get it from Celine? Something different, something I always wanted. No kidding, something different. <laughs> Have you had a chance to get on the streets at all with it? In a couple hours I will, but not right now. Okay, okay, so is she gonna be a queen or are you gonna hit the streets with it? Absolutely. Absolutely what? A trailer queen or streets? Streets. Uh, there you go. And the 91 freeway on gridlock. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess you'll be standing still at five miles an hour with the hottest looking pony from Celine on the 91 freeway. Fantastic, fantastic looking car, man. I really enjoyed it. Did you, uh, who came up with the, the color scheme? I wanted it. Okay, okay, okay. It's a man, what he wants. Wow, wow. To shell out of your pocket, to come out with that, not bad, not bad at all, man. So are you going to, do you think you'll be hitting uh, Willow Springs with it? Just to test it out? Probably not, no. Well, how are you going to know what it, what it can do for you? If I can get a feel for it already. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, <laughs> standing still is going fast. <laughs> well, folks, you have it here. I'm with the uh, the proud owner of this uh, new Celine. And uh, so it must have that the, the number on the uh, on the bumper, right? Number 30. Number 30, OK. 015, beautiful car. And man, are you going to fire it up? I can. Really? I want to 
Yeah, man, let's hear it. Let's Stand hear it. Front seat in the back. All right. I'm going to the back, folks. And uh, this is the 302. It's a 15. Old 15 Celine. With the twin screw supercharger in it. So we're just going to hear how it sounds, man. The gentleman's going to fire it up for us. Let's see what we let's, let's see what it can do. Let's here we go. Well there folks, there you have it. You have the sound of a 302 015 that's hot, hot, hot off the tracks at Celine. Okay, number 30, the guy hasn't even driven it yet. Oh, it's beautiful, it's detailed to the max. Hey, these, those are 20s, huh? Not bad at all, not bad at all. I'm gonna take a, you know folks, I will take a picture of this and you can see it on the, on the Instagram, okay? This is Joe Britt, we're at the entrance of the Celine headquarters in Corona, California. Uh, for, it's like an appreciation day, but it's in the open house that Steve Celine does. I think this is, this is his 19th year of doing this. All right, we're gonna keep on walking around and talk to a lot of folks. Joe Britton, we're out. Okay, folks, I, you know, <laughs> technical difficulties. I forgot to turn my mic on. <laughs> so as, as they would say in some communities, hey, my bad. <laughs> okay, but nevertheless, we have, uh, without further ado, the motorcycle uh, extraordinaire. Chris, are you on the line? <laughs> hey, Joe, how you doing? All right. Chris is our road warrior. And anything about motorcycles, uh, from the tires to what type of petrol, gasoline to put in, what type of rubber, he's the man that we go to. So, glad to have you on board, dude. Today is a hot Saturday. How come, not there? How come you're not out there working on your tan, man? What's up with this? Hey, you know, I, I was a little earlier. I went out for a nice ride. Uh out down to uh, the Corona area, kind of like where you're just um, doing your, your broadcast there, <laughs> and, uh, and back today. So I, I put in a few miles and got out in the sun and enjoyed this nice weather we're having. All right, all right, all right, <clears throat> all right. And for those of you that are on the East Coast, blah, blah, blah. This is how we roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No, okay, dude. Great. So what you got for us today, man? Well, you know, today I, I just wanted to touch base on uh, – um, an important uh, piece of, um, of safety gear, which is our, our, our head, our the helmet. You know, um, you know, here in California, we have our, our helmet law, so we are required to wear one when we ride. And um, we also we have, a, you know, I will say four fundamental choices to make when it comes to the style of a helmet. And I'm just going to touch base on a couple of these here because uh, there are. Thousands of designs and styles and makes and manufacturers, but uh, yeah, let's, let's go through some of the, the fundamentals here. The first one I want to uh, mention is the, uh, the skull, what they call the skull cap, or the uh, what I just refer to as the legal minimum requirement uh, to meet legal uh, standards for a helmet. Well, you're not talking. Uh, you, you, oh, wait, wait, wait. You, you're not talking a, a do rag, right? Not the do-rag, not the do-rag, which they're also called skull caps, but they also refer to the helmet. The one that looks like a glorified roller derby helmet, as I also like to refer to it as, uh, um, or they might even look like the old World War II German helmets. Oh, those, um, the, the Gestapo-looking type hats. I mean, the... Yeah, well, they, 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 they are, they come in several designs now. They, they started off looking like, like those, you know, uh, war helmets of the Germans of World War II, but they also have other designs now that look like, um, kind of shaped like a bicycle helmet. Uh, right. Right. Yeah, a little bit more coverage there. But um, these helmets are legally compliant. And when I say that, that means they have what's called a DOT certification on them, uh, Department of Transportation, it's a uh, state and federal certification of, of safety. Uh, so the helmets do go through a, you know, a drop test, and a, a spike test, a weighted, weighted device they, uh, they use to impact the helmet before it ruptures. But, you know, these helmets are, as I say, they're legally compliant, and in my opinion, that's about all they're worn for. Stop right uh, there. That, stop right there. Chris, stop, stop uh -huh. right there. I wouldn't wear that helmet if you paid me, okay? <laughs> uh, one good one good crash, one good hit, dude, 
it's 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 uh it's, it's daisy time for you man exactly that I mean, that that i believe is true and again these helmets are for the guys who would normally probably not even be wearing a helmet when they ride and you know um I, i'm a I'm a uh, I'm all for freedom of choice, you know, when it comes to that. And when the helmet law came out, I was kind of on the fence with it. For me, it didn't make any impact. I always would have worn a helmet. But there were times, uh, I have to admit, back in my early days, that I, I went for a couple of rides, you know, uh, in the neighborhood without one. But once I got up on the highway, I always put one on. But anyway, uh, nowadays we all have to wear them. These are, like I said, legally compliant at the minimum. And that's about it. You get in a wreck with one of these things, and you might probably be not wearing them. No, you 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 would just say hasta la vista, baby. Right. So this 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 you know these almost do comply with the law, and that's you know, that's good enough, I guess, at that okay. point. Okay, I got you. So the next type of helmet um, would be you know going going up the ladder, let's say, would be a standard open face helmet that has more protection on the side of the head, the forehead. And all the way around to the back and below the skull line, which is a very critical spot uh, when you do fall. You even notice football players' helmets go back far enough to protect the bottom of the base of the skull, which is a very vulnerable spot as well as the temples, <coughs> excuse me, the forehead. Um, I wore an open face helmet for many years uh, in my earlier days, and um, you know they get the job done. I, my uh, off-roading helmet was primarily an open-face helmet, and uh, um, and I rode on the road with one. Uh, many people still do, and it's you know I started bruising the face and all that. So they are they are good helmets. Um, next style up. Well, let me let me take a moment here and also say, with the range of budgets available for helmets. Um, the weight of a helmet is going to increase as the price comes down. <laughs> and I'll just say that because it's the, the type of components that the helmet is made with um, to meet the DOT standards. To, uh, to go on the cheaper side, the helmet tends to be a little bit heavier because it takes a little bit more material and different types of material to, to meet those standards. Hold on a minute. Right there. Right there. That's uh-huh. a good point. Okay, let's say that I I, I, I got more bucks than uh, J. Paul Getty, okay? There you go. And I want to have a feather hat, I mean a f- helmet, but I want all the bells and whistles. And I stepped up and I got a 100% carbon fiber full face uh, helmet that's light, 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 but strong, strong, strong. Uh, budget means nothing to me at that rate because I'm J. Paul Getty, okay? Sure. What kind of dough do you think I'd pay for that? Um, hold that thought. Let me get to that in just a second. <laughs> right, Let me go up to my next style helmet, right. which is the full face helmet. Okay. And again, this has the extra chin bar that comes around the front of the face for more protection. Um, variety of styles, variety of graphics, and so on. The fourth style helmet is what I call a combination, open and full face. It is a full face helmet with all the bells and whistles you're talking about, and the face of the helmet actually opens up to make it an open face helmet. So you can have the best of both worlds. If you're just not too around town, you crack the whole thing open, have an open face, get up on the highway, on the roadway in the wintertime, you can pin this, the face of it down, and you have the full protection of a full face helmet, including the visor and such. Now, I personally ride with a full face standard helmet. Uh, you know, I have that uh, fighter pilot type of uh, sun shade that slides down inside of it, you know, protect the eyes and so on. You can pay as little as $29, $25 for the skull cap compliant helmet, and as much as, and I have seen, up to $3,000 and more for the lightest strongest professional grade uh, combination helmet on the market. And that's, uh, I'll throw a name out there. The shooter makes probably Man, the wait, most wait, expensive so, so $3,000, does, does that come with a hologram inside the windshield of some dancing girls or what? You would think so at that price, but basically um, it's a helmet that is, is uh, I've actually picked one up very gently. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to drop it and have it added to my credit card bill. But um, it is, Feather weight. 
it, it would be a helmet that you almost don't even feel on your head um, because it's so lightweight and it does use uh, premium uh, materials such as carbon fiber and other uh, other materials to make it compliant. Uh, it exceeds you know, you know DOT standards, and it has all the bells and whistles. Now it's also with a custom graphic on it. You know yeah, that will add money to the helmet, custom colors and graphics. But um, let me mention if you get a full face helmet. Uh, make sure you get one uh, that, you know, obviously fits your head and face uh, comfortably and also has ventilation uh, that is appropriate for your type of writing. Um, something that has vents that will help keep the your face shield from fogging up in the, in the front and mouthpiece area, as well as maybe vents along the top. But you can open and close in the weather and help the air uh, circulate around the head and keep you cool. So that's so, also important. Hey, if you so, don't have any of those vents, you're going to overheat. So, Chris, so Chris, if you have a, uh-huh. if you have an extra enormous head, I mean a big rock, a boulder on your neck, um, do they make triple X size helmets? They do. They do. They do. Hmm. You can get helmets uh, custom sized uh, if, if you wish. You can, you know, I would say unless you know exactly what you're getting, or, you know, ordering something online is kind of difficult when it comes to helmets. You almost need to go someplace that has them, try some on, see if they fit, see how they fit. Because even if you do do a measurement on your head and you say, okay, I have X number of inches diameter. I have this size of a hat that I wear. <clears throat> when you get right down to it, the way the foams are put in the helmets, the way the face uh, padding fits around your face, and everybody's face is a different size as well. It's not just the head. Yeah, I can't, you know, if you're going with an open, a full face helmet, you got to think about your face. you got big cheeks, chin, you know, chin, jaw, whatever, nose. It's like, it's like buying know. a pair of shoes, right? <laughs> It's more no, it's more intense than buying a pair of shoes. Actually, it goes, uh, there's probably a little bit more to it than that. Um, although you know, <laughs> it can be it can, it can, buying shoes can also be that uh, that the complex. But when it comes to a helmet, this is something that you don't want to you know be too loose on your head, uh, fall off, especially if you are in an accident. But you don't want to be on so tight that it's uncomfortable either. And like I said, if you're uh, if you have a limited budget and you know and you don't want to put out a lot of dollars and you can't afford to, uh, but you still want the, the protection of a you know, good open face or a full face helmet, <clears throat> they're going to be a little bit heavier, more than likely. But there are many, many different uh, manufacturers and models out there. Try a lot of them on. Go through different places and see what they, what they fit, how they are. I know every time I buy a new helmet, um, you know, it's, it's usually an ordeal, and I've really gotten the same one twice. Okay. Uh, you know, so I like trying different, different things, too. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Something just shot in my head right now that I got to ask you. U.S., United States versus China. Who has the best helmets? What do you think? <laughs> I got you, buddy. I got you. Put you got to give it up. There, huh? Give it up. Give you it know, up. Um, I, I, honestly, I'm not going to pick a side because, like I said, I never buy the same one twice. I used to be a, um, a particular brand uh, type of person like I am with my vehicle sometimes and but even then I change it up, and, um, you know, you, you just got to see what's out there on the market and, and whatnot. As long as they are DOT compliant, they all meet the same safety standards, um, the best helmet for you is the one that fits your head. Hmm. Well, hopefully. <laughs> is that a point? Yeah, 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 you got to. You, yeah, you, <laughs> you wiggle out on that one, but hopefully the person coming in that's uh, looking for a helmet doesn't like a Cyclops, man. And you need a four double X or a ten double X. But I tell you, yeah, I'm well, gonna yeah. go. Look, I I'm gonna put it on the line, man. For me, it's America first. If I it, I'll search and search and look for an American helmet that would fit my noggin, okay? And if I can't sure, find sure. one that's been made, produced in America to help feed off guys here, then and only then will I venture out to look for something that's made from overseas. And that's just the way I roll. There you go. And, and there's nothing wrong with that either. No, Absolutely. no, no. That's the American way, brother. <laughs> there you go. You but know you what? Know, like I said, the best, the best helmet for you, the one that fits, provides the, the level of safety uh, and protection that you're looking for, you know, I'm not going to go out there and say, you know, everybody should wear a full face helmet. I'm just saying that's what works for me. I know my in my uh, my one big wreck that I had, if I had been wearing anything less than a full face, I wouldn't be here on the phone with you now. Um, and bottom line, uh, and so you know, 
Okay. <laughs> but whatever works best for you, that's what you go with out there. I understand it, dude. I really appreciate you calling in on a fantastic, a fantastic Saturday day. I know it's hot outside, and uh, I know you had plenty of other things to do, but yet you are our ro- road warrior, and we appreciate you calling in and giving us the good inf- information and tips for the motorcycle enthusiasts out there that are listening currently. You all are most welcome. I sure enjoy doing it. Take care of yourself, dude, and I will talk to you soon. You too, Joe. Okay. <laughs> it has been a Hello. pleasure. JP, let's uh, pay some bills. Right back, folks. <laughs> Don't worry about a thing, pretty lady. You're in good hands with J&K Auto Body Paint and Repair. J&K Auto Body has been serving the Rialto area for years and are considered to be one of the oldest and the best auto body shops in town. The right people with the right tools and the right experience that can give you the service and the quality that you expect. 24 hours, 7 day a week towing is available. That's J&K Auto Body, 241 South Palm Avenue, Rialto, California. Across the street from the Metrolink station. Call us at 909-875-0400. 909-875-0400. That's 909-875-0400. You and I Auto Truck Parts and Wrecking is loaded with 15 acres of used, salvaged, and rebuilt parts for your car or truck. Sure, you could go to any wrecking yard, but you and I has what it takes. Expertise, high quality products, and the finest customer service you'll receive anywhere. UNI makes custom drive shafts, furnishes full warranties on all their parts, and keeps up on industry changes. Call 909-888-6841. You'll be impressed by the fast and friendly response from the UNI skilled staff. You can also go to the Contact Us page and request a part. UNI hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 8 till 5, and Saturday, 8 till 3. UNI Auto Truck Parts and Wrecking is located at 1435 West Rialto Avenue in San Bernardino. Check out the U and I webpage at the letter U, the letter I, autoparts.com or call 909-888-6841. 909-888-6841. You're listening to Gotcha Racing Live on KCAA 1050 AM with Joe Britt. Now get to the chopper. Hasta la vista, baby. Also on 106.5 FM. That's my studio voice. 106.5 FM. You can find us every Saturday at 4 o'clock. Gotcha Racing Live coming to you strong and loud and clear from the desert to the sea. <laughs> That's my studio voice there. All right. All right. Boy, man, time is flying by. You believe that? <coughs> Next interview I have. I was at the Ronald McDonald House in Redlands, and you know these. I didn't know what they did, but they help a lot of folks, man. Um, for uh, parents that are waiting on their kids, kids that are having uh, operations, and parents need somewhere to stay, uh, these guys are stepping up, really stepping up. But anyway, once a year they have a uh, car show there. And I just happened to uh, be there on a Sunday morning, right after I got off the board uh, f- uh, with my clients here at KCA in the morning. I do produce uh, three shows in the morning on Sunday, which I enjoy. And this young lady has a one of the cleanest Corvettes I have seen in a long time. So, Mr. JP, can you load that one up and let's uh, see what she has to say about that vet of hers. Hey folks, I'm standing with Janet. Janet is a proud owner of a Z06 Corvette. You know, uh, a year ago, well, I say two years ago, when this, when we were at SEMA, we saw this, and we were we were commenting uh, with the guy from Gotcha Racing TV how much the we thought this Corvette has a lot of European styling to it, and they, I, I, I tell you, Corvette had really stepped up their game. Uh, and made this presentation of the Corvette my favorite, actually, the 2015. Uh, and this just packages the Z06 Corvette. Young lady, how are you? Very good, thank you. So, 
I was surprised, surprised, because us guys like car, and us, us guys like muscle. But here you are, young lady, about a buck 25, and this is your car. Yes. And you're the driver. Yes. What possessed you to get a beast like this? I've had many Corvettes, I've had two other Z06s, and I wasn't going to have anything else. <laughs> Okay, so you've been around the block a couple of times. Yes. As yes. far as, as far as Corvettes are concerned. Yes. All right. So you are a true uh, enthusiast. Yes, I I love Corvettes. They're a passion, and I had to have the newest, newest and greatest. You know what? You 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 you're are after my heart. You're after my heart. Now. When you picked this out, did you uh, pick out the rims for it? Did you have a, did they give you, what, three or four different styles to choose from or what? Yes, there's several, several colors. I chose, this is the first white Corvette I've had. I chose the white, this first white. I chose the white because I love the white and black detail, and I figured that only the black wheels would go with this white car. Here's a question that I, I know my audience they're itching to find out. Do you step on this thing in the Do you step on this? You have no choice but to step on it. <laughs> you hear that, folks? <laughs> if you could only see this young lady that I'm speaking with, she, yeah, she steps on it. I guess she's a she's had a lot of Corvettes before, and uh, the power behind this is phenomenal. 650 horsepower, 650 foot-pound of torque. Is that right? Yes. Well, what do you do with that? Because I, I, I know you're not taking to the to Stater Brothers and getting milk and, and cheese, huh? I do that too. Well, then if you go there, you must be you, you got to be parking it sideways, because uh, you know people really don't care about what you have, and you're taking this beautiful thing to uh, a, 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 a corner store to get milk. You got guts. This is my daily driver. If it's bad weather, I take a truck. True independent woman. Thank you very much, Johnny, for your time. Continue uh, to represent America with the Corvette because this is a true, a true, true representation of what we can actually do in America as far as our mechanical ability and the styling. This is, I love this Corvette. I love it. I just can't. It's a big ticket item for me and I can't afford it, but it looks like you can. Hats off to you. Thank you for enjoying my car. <laughs> Take care of yourself. <laughs> All right. Hey, folks, I'm being true to the craft, okay? <laughs> my engineer's laughing his butt off because I said I can't afford that particular Corvette. Well, you know, uh, just the way it is. I know what I can drive. So, nevertheless, uh, let's get to this um, this other interview that we have lined up. It's a, um, I found this, uh, this gentleman, I was out in... Larndale, California, one afternoon, and this guy's working on a Nomad. Yeah, one of the prettiest uh, and well constructed Chevys I have seen in a long time. So, Mr. JP, let's go ahead and load that Nomad up and see what uh, this young man has to say. Well, folks, you know, th this is Joe Britt, and uh, you wouldn't believe. Uh, you know, we have a segment on Gotcha Racing Live called Off Track, and that's when we are around and about in different neighborhoods in different parts of Southern California. And we, believe it or not, I'm chasing the guy, Joe Ellis. Now, you've heard Joe Ellis on the show before. This guy, is, I call him Dr. Frankenstein uh, of electronics. You know, he'll build anything. I, I, I even think he's been on a submarine before. I know I've seen him in an airplane. But nevertheless, he is Dr. Frankenstein of electronics. Lo and behold, I'm in the city of Harthorn, okay? And I'm at... Uh, a shop in Hawthorne, um, and lo and behold, I'm chasing Joe Ellis, and here's a Nomad. And the Nomad is, of course, you know, how he does it, it's all apart and wires and whatnot, but first thing he told me was to look under under the chassis, and believe it or not, you would swear this is an extended Corvette, okay, <laughs> folks? It's absolutely gorgeous. It has, uh, is that a three inch or two and a half inch? Um, exhaust? What is yeah. that? I think it's a three-inch. It's a three-inch exhaust. Yeah, and those mufflers are what? What are those? Um, Magnaflow. 
Okay. Uh, the guy you hear in the background is the owner, David Redding. And we're in, like I said, the city of Hawthorne. And believe me, folks, when you know when I say this is a diamond in the rough, believe me, this is a diamond in the rough. Uh, it's a two-tone Bel Air, it's a two-door. No, it's not a. No, it's a Nomad uh, wagon, and uh, it's a, it's a two-door, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And you know, when I say gorgeous, is when I see things that are not complete. It has a. That's an LS motor, right, David? LS three. LS three motor in it. Um, and you would. To look at it, you would swear it's it's right off the factory line. Let me introduce you to the, the primary, um, the owner of this fabulous car. David Redding, how are you, sir? Very good. Nice to see you. Likewise, I'm sure. Okay. Give me the story behind this awesome beast of yours. Well, like I was telling you, um, I found, I've been looking for a Nomad for about a year. I had one when I was in high school and college and had to sell it when I went in the Navy and always wanted another one and and uh, so I started looking for one it took me a year and I finally ran across one uh, online and I called the guy and uh, he, he was getting ready to go to an auction so he told me to call him back on Monday when he got back and I called him and he sold it at the auction but he knew who he sold it to and he, he gave me the phone number and I kinda thought well why would you want to sell it you know he just bought it and uh, and I waited a week, kind of got antsy, couldn't find anything else, and I gave the guy a call. And um, he tells me that he's going out of town that weekend to look at another Nomad and to call him back on Monday. So I call him back, and he bought the other Nomad, and he said, I, I could have either one. And um, and I went back and forth for, because he was in San Antonio, and I'm in Los Angeles, and we went back and forth for uh, a few months talking about it, and... and um, he was coming out to the Roadster show in Pomona, and I met him out there and, and saw he brought what he did was started building chassis for 58 through 62 Corvettes and putting LS motors in them with six speeds. Now, you, you told me earlier that was about 10 years ago when you started, huh? I believe it was around 10 years ago when he started doing this. He had he'd owned us, him and his dad owned a speed shop going back into the 40s or 50s, I think, outside of San Antonio little town called Seguin, and um, and he was started building them for Corvettes, and his friends wanted him to to make them for him for them for uh, fifty five six or seven Chevys. So he started building the he, he just it lengthened the chassis a few inches and changed the the body mounts and uh, and the fifty five six and sevens dropped right on. And um, so for, so for, so for all intended purposes, this is a Corvette, yeah, a, with an extended Corvette. Yeah, it's all C5 Corvette uh, chassis and, and brakes, uh, rear end. It's, you could get either a Dana 30, 36 or a Dana 44 rear end in it. And uh, it's got an LS3 with a 4L65E transmission, all really nice package. So um, this is not your mama's Nomad? Not exactly, <laughs> no. <laughs> Now, <laughs> earlier we just we were talking about um, you had one of these as a youngster. Yes. Okay. And, and now you got it again. So, um, and also you said something about the Navy. You going to the Navy and your wife, and that was an interesting story. I I got to have it. I got to have it. Give me some of that. Well, like I said, I had this car, or a Nomad, from the time I was a junior in high school until I graduated uh, from college. My wife and I both went to SC, and I graduated in 68 and that was right in the middle of the Vietnam War and I actually got my number came up in in October of 67 and they wanted me real bad and so I joined the Navy and then she, Navy let me finish school because they wanted to send me to OCS in Newport Rhode Island but uh, then my wife I wasn't married at the time but we got married before uh, after I got out of OCS but before I went to Vietnam and um, I had still had the Nomad, but she was still going to school. And with me not being around, that wasn't going to work very well. And uh, so I sold the Nomad and bought her a new Chevelle. So she'd had something to drive that I, was dependable. And that was the last of the Nomad. And here, 50 years later, I got another one doing it all over again. You see, folks, it, that says something, okay? A happy wife makes a happy life. <laughs> <laughs> 
and they're still together. Hmm? Yes, we're still together. And 45 years. 45 years, folks. And, and and he has his prior possession back. He had to go to Texas to get it. But I tell you, in order to look at it, you'd have to – it would be thumbs up. Now, I can see this particular car at uh, Concourse de Elegance uh, at Pebble Beach because it's – or SEMA. Is it going to SEMA? I don't know whether I, I – do, I do belong to the Nomad Club, and their show in July this year is – in uh, just outside of Reno or not Las Vegas, and uh, I'm going to take it to. Hopefully, if Joe takes care of me, okay. we're gonna we're gonna have it ready, and I'm going to take it to the show. And I like the local shows, um, and uh, although I want to drive it, it's a driver. It's built to to drive. And I'm getting nicks here and there, and I don't worry about that because I do want to drive it. I know stuff is going to happen to it. Oh, so she is she won't be a queen? Uh, no, no. A, a trailer queen. That's what nope, we're talking nope. about. No, uh, this is going to be a driver. Okay, okay, okay. Interesting. I told him if it was, I'm not wearing it. Well, see, see, now that's the voice of Joe Ellis, Dr. Frankenstein. Um, he's doing what he does best, and he is inside of the car, of course. Um, oh, what happened to your smocks and all that? You know, not wearing a smock today. Yeah, I, I told him that I'm only going to work on it on my time off. So he really gets casual when he works on this car. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? We know what the outcome is going to be. And if Mr. Ellis has something to do with your time schedule, you're in July. I believe you will make it, firing it up. And uh, have you fired it up yet? Not yet, huh? No, we're waiting for the, um, the last details. Just the last details. Okay, okay. Well, that's great. All right, folks. Um, this, uh, this gentleman is uh, you, you the, the manager of, no. of Napa? Now, I own the Napa Auto Parts store in Hawthorne, California. Oh, see, so, so you hear that? that that's a shameless plug, that's folks. That, that, that's a shameless plug. It's, it's but, actually Eddings Brothers, but we've the family started the business in 1941. Wow. But we don't mind giving someone a, a plug, uh, especially when I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at a, a, a Picasso. Actually, I'm looking at a Picasso. And, I, and I'm looking at the guy who's doing the electronics work, and I'm looking at the owner. So uh, absolutely great. I give you thumbs up on it. And um, as I said before, this is Joe Britt. Folks, you know me. Um, got your racing live. And we broadcast uh, through KCAA radio every Saturday at 4 o'clock. And this segment will fit right into our off track. Mr. Edding, thank you for your interview. Well, I appreciate your interest in the car. Oh. <laughs> this way, in some communities, you would say, "Well, this is how I roll, man." <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, folks, you got me back in the hot seat. Uh, it got your racing live at KCAA, one of the strongest and most powerful stations in the IE. We're now on 106.5. I'll say that again. We are now on 106.5 FM <clears throat> and 1050 AM, soon to be on 106.3 FM. So we're going to get you coming and we're going to get you going. Look, this is Joe Britt. <clears throat> I try to give you um, informative information and entertainment of what's going on in the racing community and just the, the general automotive community in Southern California. I believe I have uh, my fingers on, on the pulse of what's going on. And uh, I say sometimes it's just like the baker. I want to give it to you hot and fresh, just like you get in the morning from the bakery. All right. So this is Joe Britt, I'll say again, coming to you live and strong from the desert to the sea on a powerful 106.5 and a powerful 1050 a.m. Uh, the other's FM, and we are here every Saturday at four o'clock. And uh, I tell you what, um, I enjoy my job. You believe that? How many people out there can say, "Hey, man, I enjoy my job. I enjoy getting getting out there and beating the bushes and finding that diamond in the rough, and getting a great interview." And it's funny because a lot of guys are approached to get on air. They're scared to death. They can turn a wrench. They can put superchargers on an automobile. Or they can put twin four-barrel Harleys on a, on a on an old car. But when it comes down to the red lights on, let's talk. They forget their names. <laughs> so I tell you, talking to me in an interview is just like two guys in my garage talking shop without beer. Okay, you know when we get beer, we get 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 kind of loose and whatnot. But on the air, you can't do that. So. 
And I try to be real uh, candid and real friendly with the people that I uh, that I interview, um, because life is too short to be to do it any other way. You know, I will never blindside you. Never, never, never. Now, I'm also looking for folks to get out there and do what I do um, at different racetracks. Call me here. Call me here and let me know. OK, I see me an email. Hey, this is Joe Britt coming to you live and strong, and we are almost out of time. We're almost out of time. Thank you for listening to Gotcha Racing Live. <laughs> oh, that's Joe Pagano doing faces at me. I tell you what, folks, we'll see you next week. Four o'clock here, same time, same bat time, same bat station. Thank God. Thank and God bless. This is 1050 AM KCAA Loma Linda and 106.5 FM Yukaipa. Welcome to My Awesome Empire. We often share with you the stories of innovators who brought an idea to the Inland Empire and built a dream. Jason Riley is one of those. He's the man behind the Inland Empire's only distillery. We meet Jason and drink to his success later in our show. Also, 10-year-old Cece from Moreno Valley tells us all about making music. But first, we meet Grace from Fontana. One day while watching the Dr. Phil show, she says she was inspired. She'd always wanted to work with kids, but in that program, she learned about foster kids and mentoring. A phone call to Casa of San Bernardino, and she was on her way to becoming a mentor for kids who need it most. Cal State San Bernardino communications student Nathan Runyon stopped by Casa of San Bernardino this week to visit with Grace and asked her to describe mentoring. Mentoring in its very basic form is somebody that you are there for, someone that you can teach someone who's less experienced and most often younger. But again, in its most basic form, it's just somebody you're there. Right. Okay. So, well, how were you introduced to mentoring? I was introduced through Dr. Phil, actually. I love, love, love my Dr. Phil. Um, I had always had a passion for children, and I was trying to figure out in what capacity I could work with them. And I just happened to be watching Dr. Phil, and he did a segment on CASA, and I just fell in love. So I Googled our local CASA um, office, and they happened at that time to be down the street from us. So I did my interview, and the rest is history. <laughs> so you're, you're talking about CASA of San Bernardino, aren't you? Yes. When you were introduced to mentoring, so when was that? How long ago? That was back in 2009. And then, so who was your very first mentee? Tell us about him or her. My first, his name is Michael. Um, I'm actually still his CASA. He is absolutely wonderful. He's my first special needs child. Um, we have such a good time together. I take him on outings just like a big brother, big sister kind of program. Um, and there's, I, I don't have enough good things to say about him. Um, from where we were when I met him to where we are now, there's been a big change. And I credit that to being his casa. He's, he's great. And you say CASA. What do you mean by that? CASA stands for Court Appointed Special Advocate. We deal with foster children. So all of your mentees are foster children? Yes. All of our CASA mentees are children that are in the system. Is there a big need there? Huge need. Um, San Bernardino County has the largest amount of foster kids in the system in the entire United States. Right now, I believe the number is around 5,000. Um, our waiting list, um, we still have a long waiting list, uh, so we can always, always, always use volunteers. Grace, I'm sure people are listening right now, <laughs> and they're thinking, what if I didn't have anything in common with this foster child? And this whole thing just wouldn't work for me. Is that true? Do you have to have a lot of things in common with them? And what makes it click? Well, to be honest, it's very rare that you will actually have anything in common with foster kids unless you've been in the system yourself. 